once we have the production budget completed, then we need to figure out how much stuff that we need to purchase. So this question is asking us to determine how much are we going to have to purchase during the month of May. Um, we won't need all of this information, but let's just uh, let's just lay out here for May, June, and then uh, July. Let's lay out what our sales budget is. So we expect to sell in the month of May 8,700 things, the month of June 12,600, the month of July 13,100. And remember, these items here are the finished goods, the, the actual products that our customers would be purchasing. Now, we're almost always going to have some kind of a safety stock, and in this case, it's 10% of the following month's sales. Um, that's our ending inventory requirement. So, for the month of May, we're going to have an ending inventory of 1,260. That's simply 10% of 12,600. And for the month of June, we plan to end with 1,310 items in inventory. That's 10% of July's 13,100 sales budget. But if we start the month with some beginning inventory, we don't need to purchase or produce that inventory uh, because we already have it on hand. So let me just, uh, it's going to get a little skinny here, but let's, let's throw April into the mix. I probably should have done that at the beginning. And we know that the ending inventory at April would be 870 units. That's just 10% of May's, May's uh, production forecast or sales forecast. So what we can do now is we can say, okay, if inventory at the end of April is 870, that will be our beginning inventory for the month of May. So for the month of May, we plan to sell 8,700 things. We need another 1,260 on hand to satisfy our safety stock, but we don't need these 870 because they would already be on hand. So that's our production requirement for the month of May. <coughs> In a pretty similar fashion, we can take May's ending inventory and treat that as the beginning inventory, beginning of June. And again, we can combine J June's sales forecast with the required ending inventory and then subtract the beginning inventory and we can see that we need to make 12,650 um, things during the month of June. Now they're asking us, what's the, uh, what's the purchases requirement for May? <coughs> well, if each one of these items requires four pounds of raw material, then we know that simply to meet the production requirements for May, we're going to need a little over 36,000 pounds of raw material. And for June, we're going to need 50,600 pounds of raw material. Now, we're getting really close to the, um, to the end of the problem, <coughs> but what we, what we also have to do is we have to take a look here and we say, okay, what are the budgeted raw material purchases for the month of May? We can certainly start with this 36,360, but then we see that ending inventory should be 40% of the following month's raw material for purchases. So if we take June's purchases of 50,600, 40% of that is 20,000. 240 pounds. So in addition to the 36,000 that we need to satisfy May's production numbers, we also need an ending inventory. Now the good thing is we're going to have a beginning inventory. How much is that beginning inventory? It might seem a little bit like we don't have enough information, but we do because April would have had an ending inventory for raw materials of 40% of May's required production. So May's required production, 36,360, that's the, that's the number of pounds of material we would need to satisfy that production. And we can assume that we would have started the month with that in, um, in our beginning inventory 
and so 40% that's 14,544 pounds bring that over here as a beginning inventory now we're getting really close to the end of the problem and let's just bring it to completion here 36,360 plus 20,240 minus 14,544 gives us 42,056 pounds that's how much stuff we need to plan to purchase for the month of May.